So today we will continue our discussion on modeling of distillation column. Modeling of distillation column. So in the last class we have derived mass balance equations. I mean first we have derived total mass balance equation along with the component mass balance equation, fine. Now we have mentioned that the total mass balance equation is used to calculate liquid hold up, liquid hold up represented by m unit is suppose mole and component mass balance equation we can use to calculate liquid composition which we have represented by x and x is the mole fraction fine and based on some assumptions we have concluded that all vapor flow rates are identical. That means V1 equals to V2 equals to Vn equals to Vb. Now other variables I mean apart from these variables include the vapor phase composition fine another one is liquid flow rate. We have discussed the calculation procedure of vapor flow rate of any component i that is y i equals to alpha i j x i divided by 1 plus alpha i j minus 1 into x i. This equation we have derived and this is called as equilibrium relationship, equilibrium relationship. Our assumption is that alpha i j remains constant throughout the column. So, alpha i j is known, x we can get from the component mole balance equation or component mass balance equation. So, we can calculate the vapor composition. Today, we will discuss the calculation of this liquid flow rate. Today, we will discuss the calculation of liquid flow rate. That means, we will discuss liquid hydraulics, liquid hydraulics. The liquid hydraulics is calculated by the use of well known Francis Weir equation. Francis Weir equation. Liquid flow rate is calculated by the use of well known Francis Weir equation. So, for the example distillation column, we will consider the simplified form of this Francis Weir equation and that is the linearized form. So, we will consider the linearized form of Francis Weir equation. So, if ln is the flow rate of a liquid leaving nth stage, then the Francis Weir equation correlates ln equals to ln naught plus m n minus m n naught divided by beta. This is the Francis Weir form, where 
L n is the flow rate of a liquid stream, flow rate of a liquid stream leaving n stage. Fine. L n naught is the reference value of L n. L n naught is the reference value reference value of L n. Similarly, M n is the reference value of sorry M n naught is the reference value of M n. M n naught is the reference value of M n. Another term is included in the Francis Weir formula that is beta. Beta is hydraulic time constant, hydraulic time constant. The value of beta is typically taken in between 3 to 6 minutes. This beta is taken in between 3 to 6 not minutes seconds for each tray. Fine. So, beta is the hydraulic constant, it is typically 3 to 6 seconds for each tray. That means, you see the difference between M n and M n naught that is divided by the hydraulic time constant, then that amount is included with L n naught to calculate the L n. This is the simplified version of Francis Weir formula. Other forms include the nonlinear versions basically. Fine. So, we will consider this simplified form in the example distillation column modeling. Now, this is all about the distillation model. So, the model includes basically the mass balance, I mean total mass balance, component mass balance, then the vapor flow rates which are identical for all trays equilibrium relationship to calculate the vapor phase composition and last one is the tray hydraulics for the calculation of liquid flow rates. Fine. Now, we will use this model to analyze the degrees of freedom. Fine. So, next topic is the degrees of freedom for the example distillation. degrees of freedom now here we will consider one example although we have considered for the previous uh, in the development of the distillation model that is n n is basically the total number of trays excluding condenser and reboiler fine we will use this nomenclature we will use this notation in the degrees of freedom analysis. So, you can recall the degrees of freedom represented by f which is correlated with v and e by this form. f is the degrees of freedom, v is the number of independent process variables and e is the number of independent equations. So, to calculate the degrees of freedom, we need to find both V and E for the example distillation column. So, first we will go for the number of equations calculations, number of equations and the origin of their those equations we will first discuss this part. So, first one is the equilibrium relationship, equilibrium relationship. What is the equilibrium relationship we have considered for the example column? 
that is y i equals to alpha i j x i divided by 1 plus alpha i j minus 1 into x i fine. So, how many y we need to calculate? How many y are involved in the distillation model? y 1, y 2, y n, another y is involved that is y b. The composition of boiled up vapor, fine. So, what is the number? n plus 1, fine. So, total number of equilibrium equations involved in the distillation model is n plus 1. Next is hydraulic relationship, hydraulic relationship that is L n naught equals to sorry L n equals to L n naught plus m n minus m n naught divided by beta. How many liquid flow rates are involved in the distillation model? L 1, L 2 up to L n. n number of liquid flow rates we have to calculate using this Francis Weir formula. We cannot consider the distillate flow rate and bottom flow rate, although those are liquid flow rates, because those are not calculated by the employment of this Francis Weir equation, fine. So, total number of equations n, fine. Next is component and total mass balance equations. total and component mass balance equation. How many component and total mass balance equations are involved? First, you will consider for n number of trays, for n number of trays, how many equations are there? 2n one total mass balance equation, one component mass balance equation for each tray. That means, two equations for each tray. So, for n number of equations, uh, n number of stages, we have two n, uh, two n equations. Next, we will consider for the reflux drum, reflux drum, number of equations two. Similarly, for the column base. number of equations 2, one component and another one total mass balance equations. So, total number of equations how many? Total number of equations E that is equals to 4 n plus 5, total number of equations E equal to 4 n plus 5. So, next we have to find the total number of variables V. Next we will calculate number of variables and type of variables. number of variables and type of variables. So, first we will consider the liquid composition, liquid composition. How many liquid compositions are involved? x 1, x 2, x n, 
one for top section and one for bottom section fine n number of liquid compositions for n trays one for reflux drum and one for column base so n plus 2 next vapor composition how many vapor compositions are involved y1 y2 yn and one for column base there is no vapor distillate we have considered only the liquid distillate fine so there is no yd accordingly if we have total n plus 1 equations uh, n plus 1 variables those are vapor compositions next one is liquid hold ups liquid hold ups one for each tray that means m1 m2 up to mn one for reflux drum and one for column base so m number of n number of hold ups for n trays and two for reflux drum and column base fine so total number is n plus 2 next one is liquid flow rates liquid flow rates how many liquid flow rates are involved l1 l2 ln fine we are not including the flow rates of top and bottom products we will consider those separately so total number of liquid flow rates in fine now apart from these variables what are the other variables involved in the distillation modeling first you will consider the feed what are the variables used for feed f and z what about uh, top i mean top section in the top section we have another two variables one is d another one is reflux flow rate fine and what about the bottom section one is bottom flow rate another one is boil up so these two are representing the feed these two in the top section and these two we are considering for the bottom <coughs> section so how many then six six so v equals equal to how much 4n plus 11 we got e equal to 4n plus 5 and we have just calculated v equals to v equal to 4n plus 11 so degrees of freedom f equal to 4n plus 11 minus 4n plus 5 that is 6 fine that means this is under specified process since v is greater than e so this is under specified process we need to make it exactly specified so what we need to do we have to we have to uh, get f equal to 0 how we can get that there are two ways we have discussed earlier one is we need to specify more number of disturbance variables disturbance variables to reduce f 
to 0, we can specify more number of disturbance variables. So, what are the disturbance variables involved in this distillation process? One is F, another one is Z. F is feed flow rate and Z is feed composition. We can measure this feed flow rate using a flow meter. Then we have the feed flow rate information. We can measure this feed composition by any chromatographic analyzer. Then we have the composition information. If that is the case, then F reduces to 4. Previously, F was 6. We are trying to specify these two disturbance variables. That means minus 2. So, F becomes 4. What is the another option to make the process exactly specified? We can incorporate more number of control equations. So, second option is we can incorporate more number of controller equations. So, before writing the controller equations, we need to couple controlled variable manipulated variable pairs. What are the controlled variable and manipulated variable pairs to be considered for the example column? That we need to decide. So, controlled variable manipulated variable. See, this is a distillation example. Feed is introduced on a particular tray. We are getting two products. One is the top product, another one is the bottom product. So, what is the control objective for this process? Control objective is to maintain the product compositions, product purity. Fine. That means, we can consider one control variable as top product purity which is represented by top product composition. Another control variable we can consider that is the bottom product composition x b fine. Now, what will be the manipulated variable? For x d we can consider the manipulated variable that is reflux flow rate and for the bottom purity we can consider the manipulated variable as vapor boil up rate. Fine. These are the standard controlled variable manipulated variable pairs. Along with these two pairs, we can include another two controlled variable manipulated variable pair, one for top section and one for bottom section. You see the reflux drum hold up is represented by M D. Basically, in the reflux drum some liquid is accumulated and that we represent by M D. So, we can control that liquid height and that liquid height we can control by the adjustment of distillate flow rate. Some liquid is accumulated after condensation in the reflux drum. So, there is a scope to maintain the liquid hold up or we can say there is a need to maintain the liquid hold up in the reflux drum. So, if that is our objective, we can consider M D as the control variable and that can be adjusted by the outlet flow rate D. By the similar fashion, we can consider the hold up in the column base M D as the another control variable. Some liquid is accumulated in the column base which is represented by M D. If that is our objective, I mean if we want to maintain the liquid hold up in the column base, then that is the control variable and this M B can be manipulated, sorry this M B can be controlled by the manipulation of outlet liquid flow rate that is B. So, these four control variable manipulated variable pairs we can consider for the example column. 
So, one manipulated variable is r and the controller equation although we did not discuss that part we will discuss later I am just adding I am just writing the equations controller equations. If r is the manipulated variable then one controller equation is r s plus k c r x d s p minus x d. Previously we have used suffix d for the desired value. Here we are using s p, s p is the set point fine, s p means s p denotes set point, set point is nothing but the desired value fine and this r s is the steady state value of r. In process control we call r s as bias signal, r s is the bias signal that is basically the steady state value of reflux rate r. KCR is the controller parameter which we need to determine or we call tuning parameter that is basically a constant term. X d S p is the X d set point that means that is the desired value of X d and this is the actual X d. So, this is one equation. Similarly, we can write for d d s plus k c d m d set point minus m d fine. For v b we can write v b equals to v b s plus k c v x b set point minus x b and last equation is b equals to b s plus k c b m b set point minus m b. These are the control equations total four equations. So, if we include four equations then degrees of freedom becomes 0. Previously, if we, we had degrees of freedom equal to 4. After defining four control equations, our degrees of freedom becomes 0, fine. Now, we will discuss uh, how we can select the manipulated variable control variable pair for the example system. How we have selected these four control variable manipulated variable pairs that we will discuss in brief. This is the distillation tower. feed flow rate with composition, one condenser is installed at the top, this is the reflux drum, liquid is accumulated here, the hold up is M D, this is the top stage. Suppose this is a control valve which is used to manipulate the reflux rate. This is another control valve which is used to manipulate distillate flow rate. This is reflux flow rate. fine. At the bottom section this is a bottom tray, this is feed tray, some amount of liquid is accumulated here. Now, this is the reboiler, this is one control valve which is used to manipulate vapor boil up rate. 
another outlet section is included for the outflow of bottom flow rate fine now we'll consider first the top section i mean this section this is the top section in this top section you see we have selected two control variable based of our control objective one control variable is xd another control variable is md these two we have selected based on our control objective so how many equations are available for manipulation in the top section two equations uh, two variables are available for manipulation what are those variables one is r another one is d these two variables are available for manipulation now we have to pair the control variable and manipulated variable we can pair xd d and mdr fine another pair may be xd r and md d so these are two possible pairs first we will consider the first pair we want to manipulate suppose md we want to control md by the manipulation of r there is no problem we can do that if we consider the control of md by the manipulation of r we can easily do that there is no problem because this is also outflow i mean this is also outlet flow this is also outlet so we can choose any one for controlling the md another option is xd versus d suppose we have the distillate composition at the present time 95 mole percent i mean the distillate purity presently is 95 mole percent now i we want to change it to 98 mole percent purity we want to change it to 98 mole percent purity it is perhaps not possible to get 98 mole percent purity by the manipulation of distillate fine but it may be possible to get 98 mole percent purity by the manipulation of reflux flow rate because if we want to get 98 per mole percent purity there is a need to increase the reflux flow rate which will which will affect the separation in the process and there may be some improvement of composition in the top section fine if we want to increase xd there is a need to increase reflux flow rate that will affect the separation in the process and then there may be some improvement in composition it is usual for the binary distillation column if we want to increase xd there is a need to increase reflux flow rate because we are not allowing to leave the process we are again treating that steam in the process so that there is some improvement can be achieved fine so xd versus d is not a good option and the second option gets preference i mean xd versus r and this is not uh, mb this is md md versus d this is the best option among these two by the similar way for the bottom section bottom section is this one 
this one is the bottom section. By the similar way, for the bottom section, we choose x b versus v b and m b versus b. You see m b can affect the process, fine, but b is leaving the process. So, by the similar way as we discussed for the top section, this is the best option for the bottom bottom section x b versus v b and m b versus b. Fine, this is all about the mathematical modeling degrees of freedom analysis of a distillation column. Next we will start, uh, I mean we will just try to know in brief the Laplace transforms. I hope you have started this in your basic mathematics course. So, we will not uh, discuss this in details, but we will just recall the Laplace transform by some standard formulas. So, next we will start the Laplace transform. and in brief we will know the standard formulas. Basic equation of the Laplace transform of a function f t, the Laplace transform of a function f t we represent by this, f is a function and t is the time independent variable. This is equal to f bar s, the function which is written in Laplace domain, equal to 0 to infinity function of t e to the power minus s t d t. This is a standard formula. Now, we will just uh, write the formula in terms of time function, where time t is greater than or equals to 0 and the Laplace transform of those functions. Fine. If this function equal to 1, the Laplace transform is 1 by s, function equal to t 1 by s square. If this is equal to t square, factorial 2 by s cube fine. If this function is t to the power n, then this becomes factorial n divided by s to the power n plus 1. If this is e to the power minus a t, Laplace transform of this 1 by s plus a this is t to the power n e to the power minus a t. Laplace transform is factorial n divided by s plus a whole to the power n plus 1. If this is sin omega t, omega divided by a square plus omega square. Then this is equals to suppose cos omega t, s 
divided by a square plus omega square. This is sin hyperbolic omega t. Laplace transform is omega divided by a square minus omega square. If this is cos hyperbolic omega t, Laplace transform is s divided by a square minus omega square. Next one is exponential of minus a t sin omega t. Laplace transform is omega divided by s plus a whole square plus omega square and e to the power minus a t cos omega t it has <coughs> s plus a divided by s plus a whole square plus omega square. There are other functions are also there are other functions also defined in different textbooks. I mean Laplace transform of different other functions, more functions are available in textbook. So, we will not uh, discuss the Laplace transform with any more functions. So, next we will just consider the Laplace transform of derivatives. Laplace transform of derivatives fine for the first order equation laplace transform of df t dt equal to s f bar s minus f naught fine this is for first order differential equation similarly if we consider second order equation d2 ft dt square we get a square f bar s minus s f naught minus first derivative of f naught. This is for the second order equation. Similarly, for nth order equation f t d t n equal to s to the power n f bar s minus s to the power n minus 1 f naught minus s to the power n minus 2 first derivative by this way last term will be n minus 1th derivative at 0. Fine. Now, if we consider f as the deviation variable, suppose f is a deviation variable, deviation variable means f at any time t, the value of f at any time t minus the value of f at steady state. Then we can call this variable f, here it is function as a deviation variable, fine. That means, if we consider this is a function, so it is a function of deviation variables. 
if we consider f as a function, f as a deviation function, that means it is a function of deviation variables. Now, the definition of deviation variable is this, the variable at any time t minus the value of variable at steady state. If that is the case, I mean if we consider f as the function of deviation variables, what will be this first derivative? I mean the Laplace transform of first derivative, this will become 0, is not it? That means in this t equals to 0. So, f at t equals to 0 minus f at steady state we usually consider time t equals to 0 is the steady state. So, this becomes 0. Similarly, these two term become 0. Similarly, all these terms equal to 0, fine. It is the usual practice in process control. The variables in the model are considered in the form of deviation variable. What is the Laplace transform of integrals? Laplace transform of integrals. Laplace transform of a integral of function of t dt equal to 1 by s f bar s. If we consider f t as a function in time domain, then the integration of that function is this one and Laplace transform of that function is this 1 by s f bar s. Other two formulas are also used, are also in use in process control. Those are final value theorem and initial value theorem. Final value theorem. Fine. Final value theorem is limit t tends to infinity function of t equal to limit s tends to 0, s f bar s. This is the final value theorem. If our modeling equations are in time domain, then we have to consider this. If our modeling equations are converted to Laplace domain. In that case, we have to consider this. Fine. Another one is initial value theorem. Initial value theorem is limit t tends to 0 f t equals to limit s tends to infinity s f bar s. This is the initial value theorem. Similarly, if the modeling equations are in time domain, we have to consider this. If they are in Laplace domain, we can consider the right hand formula. So, these are about the in brief about the Laplace transforms, fine. Uh, next, we will go to discuss the different forcing functions. Forcing functions are usually the input variables. I mean, suppose we have a process, this is a chemical process. this is the input to the process. 
and this is the output fine. Now suppose initially the process is at steady state, initially the process is at steady state. We want to investigate the transient behavior of this process, we want to observe the dynamics of this process. How we can observe that by the use of simulator? We have to introduce some change in input variable. If we give some change in input variable, then we will get some change in output variable. That is basically the transient behavior of a process or the dynamic characteristics of a process, fine. So what type of input variables we will consider in our process control course so that corresponding output behavior we can observe from the simulator that we will discuss next. Now there are different input variables which we will consider those are like step input, fine. Another one is pulse input. It is better to write step input function, pulse input function, then ramp input function, fine. So these functions are basically called forcing function, I mean we will use this name forcing function. Now we will give change in input variable say by this fashion, we will give change in input variable as a step input, then we will observe the output dynamics. Similarly we can consider the pulse change in input variable, then the effect in terms of output variable, the change of input variable as ramp input. I mean RAM change then, then the transient behavior in terms of output variable that we will discuss in the next class, fine, thank you.